What's up, guys? My name is Maxwell from iHeartRadio, and this is a true honor to be able to talk to one dude who I think, to be honest, I may have walked past while I was doing some shopping in Santa Monica. The other gentleman I'm getting to know for the first time as well, but collectively, the Black Pumas are here with us, and I am so stoked to get to hear your story, to let you guys elaborate on where the the future of this amazing group is going and how it came together. So, Adrian, Eric, what's up? Welcome to the to the Zoom room, fellas. Thank you so much for having us, man. Thanks, Maxwell. This is so cool to hear the story, to know the story, to feel the story, to know that the persistence had been there. So, to those that don't quite know just yet, share it, explain it. How how did Black Pumas go from busking to the Grammys? I, th I think the, the the number one thing is just the love and passion that we have for it individually. And, you know, it's been amazing, I think, for the both of us to have met each other, uh, to see how the colliding of our kind of energy has, you know, elevated us to where we are. Um, Q's really good at telling that story as well. Dude. So, uh, yeah, so f fast forward uh, to, you know, I'll let Eric come back in and fill in the blanks on him moving to Austin from Santa Monica and the busking. But I, I, I met Eric in 2017. I believe you had been there in, for two years in Austin, right? Or one year before that? About a year and a half. A year and a half. Okay. Um, and in 2017, I was um, looking for somebody to collaborate with just to, at the time, I just had some instrumentals laying around and just kind of wanted to work with somebody who, who, somebody like Eric, you know, somebody who's a great singer and a songwriter and, and could fill in the blanks for what I was doing uh, production wise. So I just I just put out the call to a bunch of people. Like, hey, do you guys, anybody know anybody who would be willing to work with me on something? And um, and a mutual friend named Brian Ray told me about Eric and, and I looked him up and he just was like, dropped it like, <laughs> you have to call Eric Burton, that's the guy. And you know, I've been in Austin for a long time. I was like, how have I not heard of this guy? So I Googled him and was like, damn, I'm like really, how have I not seen this guy? <laughs> He, Eric had never heard of me either, you know, and uh, so it was kind of perfect that like, in a way, you know, we both came at it, you know, it took, I, I reached out to him, took him a couple of weeks to get back to me because he was like, well, who's this clown like reaching out, you know? <laughs> so yeah, we, we eventually just connected, um, I think it was summer of 2017 and just connected in the studio and we just started working on music. It was casual, you know, we were like, we didn't really have intention at first to, um, start a band or you know make a project we were just we would just get together once a week every couple of times a week but but honestly the first day we recorded the very first day we got together and met we recorded black moon rising and fire which would be like mm. two of our first or black moon rising was our first single you know but um we did that for a few months until all of a sudden um i mean i got chills on my back the first day that we worked together to be honest you know when it happens like that, when it is so organic, when it's just like not forced, where, you know, a, a good friend, someone who you trusted, decided to pass along this name and just say, hey, this is just gonna feel right because I know the two of you and I know where your heart and soul is in this music thing. To have that be the foundation, what does that mean? Not only for the group, but for the music that stems from that, that you're not trying to do something that you're not. I think it means a whole lot, to be honest, man. I mean, I was at a point in time, you know, as Q said, I mean, I, I, it took me about two weeks to get back to him. Um, to let him know what I thought of the music and or to even like let him know that I was interested in collaborating. Yeah. <laughs> and um, at the time, I was just kind of over, uh, you know, being contacted by other people who wanted to kind of take, you know, the intellectual property that was the song and, you know, make something of it. You know, I was kind of looking for a sound. And when I when I listened to Adrian's production, I just loved it so much that it was just kind of a no-brainer. Um, so, so, so what that means is, you know, I feel like we both are selective with who we decide to collaborate with, yeah. who, how we decide to, you know, uh, you know, show our externalities. You know, that is just performing and making music. That you know, when you have that kind of connection, the music is just reflective of you know something that is super organic and just symbiotic of the other person. So that's that's where it starts and that's where it ends with us, regardless of what the performance looks like. As as you say, getting those goosebumps earlier, I'm hearing you explain that. That's what I'm starting to feel as you you know kind of talk about what the true essence in the um, the mission statement is, and that's just so beautiful. Now we've. 
obviously been through some challenges this past year or so. Uh, man, COVID kicked a lot of us uh, square in the face and, and it's, it's allowed for a lot of challenges to be met head on and um, accomplished and hurdles to be jumped over. What were some of those that you guys had to, you know, had to, to do some of those pivots that you had to make to continue to um, stay creative and stay hungry? To be totally honest, at the beginning of COVID, um, I think it was kind of a little bit of a welcome break for us. We had been touring a lot and 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 with no end in sight. You know, we had a lot of tour dates that we were supposed to be doing, and it was nice to kind of get a quick a quick breather. You know, yeah. and just pause and kind of reflect and you know examining your priorities, catching a breather, catching up with family and friends. You know, and that that was what I think the beginning of of COVID felt like for us. I think for the most part as well that uh, the, the fact that we started off as a studio project, there was a sense of home, like a coming back home um, that was just being who we are in the retrograde period that is the music industry, you know, at the uh, time. To be respected, to be, um, you know, rewarded with, um, gosh, so many awesome accolades and opportunities and all things that are just so core to the music that you continue to put out. I want to fast forward to this beautiful Grammy performance where we had to try talking about adapting and pivoting. We had to try something new this year and to be in that room of like-minded musicians, all those who pour their heart and soul into everything they do. I'm talking the, you know, as I'm watching it from home and seeing the Harry Styles and the Billie Eilish's Bob to you guys' music and to be in that, what was that moment like for you all to be there and to see so many, you know, wonderful musicians and to be a part of that, you are included. I think that fourth wall that is, you know, maybe I learned to see this this wall of separation as a busking artist like man I'll never get to sit next to Beyonce or right behind Taylor Swift <laughs> at the Grammys you know but when it when it comes down to it once we got there I mean Adrian had been there a couple of times before but uh, not in quite such a, a grand way um, that Black Plumas has been looked at so um, I think for me individually I, I should say that um, it was like going into that mansion that you looked at, you know, from the bottom of the hill uh, and just realizing that it's, you know, it feels just like any other home, you know? So it's yeah. just like, you know, what's, what's really cool was just being around so many talented people who are surviving the same way that we are. Now, there's been some amazing opportunities also that aren't Grammy stage, but you're talking history, history, presidential inauguration, history type things, man. When you get those calls, do you freeze? <laughs> I mean, when do we find out that we were even doing that? Q? Was it like a few days before it happened? It, it came together two, quite quickly, right? Two, about two days before. Yeah, so it was it was like almost like we didn't really even have enough time to react to it. I yeah. feel like the moment hit me on the day of the inauguration, watching it back, you know, because when you're taping, doing these tapings, um, you know, you go into it thinking like, okay, this is special. But to be honest, it's really just a bunch of cameras in front of you and you yeah. run the song, you run the song five or six times and you pack up and go home. And I watched it on TV and started like, getting texts from family and friends and that was when i kind of grasped the magnitude of it and kind of brought me to tears to be part of a, a big historic day like that you know oh man that's dope dude and i'm a sports fan with the draft just happening i need to know are you guys sports dudes as well yeah a little bit you know I, right. I, I grew up uh watching uh the uh, san diego chargers you know the, when uh Ladanian tomlinson was playing yes philip rivers was quarter you know quarterbacking for that team such a great team and you know you know, unfortunately, they they haven't they have never won a Super Bowl, but but we'll get them there. You We're know, get there. I, I got some faith. <laughs> so so what I wanted to ask with this sports kind of thing going on, the NFL draft. If you were to let's think celebrity draft, if we were going to pick a celebrity to enter the crew, you know, if you were going to have to draft, you know, someone first overall to be a part of Black Pumas, who would be that person that you guys would pluck? and add into the fold of what it is that you guys do that's awesome. <laughs> okay, um, I'm, I'm gonna have to go a little bit, a little bit aside of what Eric was saying. I, I'm, I'm taking Jay-Z hope, and hoping that Beyonce comes too, so. <laughs> oh man, I would love to do some writing and, uh, you know, conceptualizing with uh, a, like a Kendrick Lamar would be really, really nice. Um, I think our, our music uh, is reflective of, of hip hop and, you know, thank God yes. for hip hop that it's, you know, 
it, it does shed light on a lot of older music um, it, with the samples and stuff. So yeah, definitely Kendrick would be one of my top guys. 2021 is here. 2022 is right around the corner. Thinking about what it's gonna be like to get on stage, the live music element back again. How excited are you guys? I think that the excitement uh, with which we create uh, the music uh, from in the first place was there when we first met. So, you know, and, and I don't think that that's ever really left. I mean, I think that we've seen some ups and downs, clearly. Um, but I believe that, uh, you know, we, we're going to go into it with, you know, a lot of confidence because we've been we've had some time to do some writing and to know yeah. that we have some ammunition for the people who are waiting to hear more music. And, you know, we're uh, excited to kind of rely on the, the energy that was there from the very beginning. <sighs> it's just kind of how we do. We missed it, but throughout this, what you have been able to create and what you've been able to give us um, has been that connectivity that the world has thrived on and it's helped us make it to this point here and now. And just congratulations on everything moving forward. But again, just thank you for being who you are and creating from the heart because that's why we're connected and that's why we're loving Black Puma. So you guys, uh, hats off or I should say sneakers off, as you can see in the background. There you go. Thank you <laughs> so much, Maxwell. Well. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Black Pumas, these gentlemen are quite honestly amazing. And as you know, you can catch their music anytime, whenever you want to on our free iHeartRadio app. That's the place to be. You guys take care. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.